What's up, nerds? Welcome to a Let's Pod and Play, an instant play, shall we say. Yes! Those are all my rhymes. I rhyme all the time. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I know. Uh, we're looking at this, the SNES Classic. Uh, we have an unboxing video, so if you want to check us out doing that stuff, you should check out that on NGR Radio's YouTube page. Uh, and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But yes. today we're going to take a look at the games that are on the SNES Classic. We're just going to play probably between two and five minutes of each game, kind of. Uh, and then we're going to take a separate look at Star Fox 2, which we actually need to, to play Star Fox 1 to unlock it, just the first level. But, uh, Ed. Yes. Let's pick a game. What are we going to start with? Oh, of course. Let's start with Contra 3. Oh, jeez. Okay, yes. I guess I'll play Contra 3. <laughs> so, uh, cool thing, though, that we forgot to mention in our unboxing video is that it does come with two controllers, which yes. was everybody's kind of gripe with the NES Classic, which I still don't have like, an NES Classic controller. Yeah. But, to be fair, if you do have an NES Classic and need another controller, these do work with it because it uses the same inputs and everything, and the Wii Classic controllers, and anything that uses the stupid Wii nunchuck attachment <laughs> plug thing right. uh, works with it. So uh, don't don't fret. Super Nintendo controller, much better design, by the way. A lot of the NES stuff. So Okay, so we're going to play Contra 3. Uh, Two players. Hey, well, go, we should have went to options. Oh. So we get up the, but that's fine. It's fine, dude. By the time we die, we'll be moving on to the next game anyway. <laughs> so Y is to shoot, B is to jump, A is yes. to Oh my gosh, it feels so good. Oh man, dude, eight, 16 bit stuff. It's the best. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. Jump. Uh. Huh? So X. Oh man, and the crouch. Oh my gosh, Contra so good. Do you remember the NES version when you were just like running up in these jungles and then you get to this like, I don't know, what was it, like a space station and you were like shooting guys, uh, you were running back and forth and the boss was in the background and you were kind of shooting up at the boss? Yes. Oh man, what a, what a great game. Contra's amazing. That's the one thing I didn't really care for about the uh, NES Classic was they included Super C and not Contra proper. Um, that's some legal battle too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were just talking about that with Ninja Turtles and Turtles in Time, about how the licensing nightmare, and I, I, it's probably the same thing with Contra. Must just be like a Konami thing. Like all their arcade games, like they had to license them out through. Yeah. And then they got the okay to to make the arcade games into. Oh, we're in a tank now, huh? Yes. Oh, I'm just gonna run everybody over. So X is uh, you could switch your buttons. Um, I can't get this guy on the ground. This, this. Ooh, you got run over. Ah, I'm already dead. It's okay. Can I press select and steal life? Go ahead. No, I can't do that. Oh, I stole it! Yeah, I'm back! And then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this game's great. I always forget that this one exists. You do? For some reason, like... I don't know, it, to me it's just like Contra is Contra, and then the, the DS one was really good. Oh, Contra 4 for the DS is hard as ever. Uh, and I can't, I'm so happy we're doing less pod plays again. It's been, <laughs> yes. It feels like so long. What was the last one we did? The Tokyo Mirage Session one, I think? Yes. Oh, well, uh, I did the Uncharted 4 one. Oh with, yeah, you and Ray did the Uncharted 4 one. But that one is not done, so. Yeah, I haven't gotten around to like, getting the file from Ray. Sorry guys. I'm charged for. That's alright, nobody wants to watch that anyway. But it was a good discussion. As you can see, Ed's still alive and I suck at video games. That's why I wanted him to play and I would just narrate. <laughs> oh, that 
that's cool. Ed, this has been quite a journey to get you here. Yes, yes. There's so many things to do <laughs> while you're here, it's awesome. <laughs> so, I'm kind of a contra uh, aficionado. aficionado. Uh, I have grown up a contra, um, you know, used to do it with the Konami code uh, to beat the gay. But I can actually be. You're one of those. One. You're one of those people that can beat Contra without the Konami code. Right? Yes. Uh, but uh, Cuphead is out, so hopefully I'll get that and ready to like do this week. Oh, we should have got. We should have got that. They didn't. They didn't have no physical ones. No, but I mean, we should have got some Microsoft points or whatever, just so we can play that, and show it off. I forgot. Oh well. There's a lot of other people playing Cuphead. Yeah. What is this thing doing? It is a, it is a humping tortoise. Dang it. My wife running through the background trying not to be noticed. Don't worry, we all saw you. With your coffee. <laughs> she tries to be so sneaky. But anyways, back to Contra. Yes. Uh, so, beat Contra, beat Super C. Uh, Contra 3 is... It's a mix between 2D and top-down. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, I beat the first level. Uh, but on this one, on the second stage, you pick an area and you zoom in. And your goal... See... It's a uh, split screen because Corey is here. Am I alive? No. But you can jump in. Yeah, I am. So. Oh, how do I duck now? So, B is for you to duck. L1. L turns. If I say L1. L turns. Oh, left. the tank controls. From freaking. Oh, I feel like I'm playing Resident Evil here. What if there's a. What if there's a Super Nintendo Resident Evil? Like, this is what it would be, right? Pretty much, yes. Don't really know where to go. Oh, and you can't jump, can you? No. Uh, that's why uh, B is the duck. Uh, this game's weird. I think this might be my first time playing this, this version of the game. Or like this... This level? No, like, the Super Nintendo version of this game. Like, I have only played the NES Contras, I've never played... <laughs> I've never played Contra 3. Wow! Dude, I told you, I'd never had a Super Nintendo growing up, I didn't get it till after my <laughs> N64. It is true. Wow. And, I, and the first games I got worse. I had the Super Mario All-Stars cartridge with Super Mario World. And I have Yoshi's Island and A Link to the Past and Mario Kart and Mario RPG. Wow. Those were the games I like needed to play. And I was like, I skipped Final Fantasy. I skipped, oh yeah, we have a bunch of like crap playing around because we're trying to like get all this together so we could get the <laughs> get you guys videos sooner than later. And Yes. So, so. Uh, did we move on to the next game? Yeah, so we got to reset the system. And you actually have to press reset. Uh, why don't we go to... Um, what do we want to show off next? Why don't we... Um, do Secret of Mana. Yes. For, for like, I don't know, a couple of minutes. Because I've never played this game either. Ed, Ed's just ashamed right now. Everybody. Ed's like, I'm going home now. <laughs> so, um, I'm, 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 I'm looking into importing the game, the Secret of Meta Collection. Oh, and the collection for the Switch. Yes. Right. Uh, and I'm also going to be picking it up for PS4. So that's what? That's obviously Secret of Mana. Uh, then yeah. it's Final Fantasy Adventures, technically, for Game Boy, right? Yeah, so Final Fantasy Adventures is the first one. Right, and then... Uh, Secret of Mana is second. The third game never came out here. Third game never came out And a lot of people think, like, Secret of Evermore is the third one. 
No. But... Secret of Evermore was developed in America. Right. It's technically not part of... Technically not part of this series. Yes. So, yeah. uh, um, they still... Seem- Decent, still a cool looking game, but just yeah, everybody's Japan and America were so weird trying to get things in line. Like Square <laughs> just like didn't want Americans to have like <laughs> the proper stuff because like Final Fantasy two here is Final Fantasy four there. Yeah. Final Fantasy three here is Final Fantasy six there. We never got the second two NES games over here until way later, uh, and then. Uh, then everything kind of became proper, and we got Final Fantasy three on DS. I remember that was such a big deal. Yes, and, and, like I don't know, a lot of people had mixed feelings about it, but I I enjoyed what I played. I didn't finish it or anything. I was like, no, this is okay. Then I went back to playing like I don't know, Gears of War. I think <laughs> I don't know. I was really big into Gears of War for a while. <sighs> like it was literally like the way I play Destiny now was yeah. Gears of War. That's how it was with wow. Gears of War, especially Gears One and Two. I was like, I was online every night playing those games, like for hours. Wow! <laughs> it was to the point where, like, me and my friends that I would play with entered like some MLG tournaments. We never like went anywhere because people were like really good, but, but like we would get in like MLG had like the the. Uh, free like tournament stuff through uh mlg battle grounds or something yeah i forget what it's called but like our team got invited to a couple of like the ohio like the regional tournaments that was in a lot of them were in ohio at that point oh cool we never went anywhere but like we did well enough from the like the free stuff that they invited us to uh some of those and i got some like the gears of war themed controllers and stuff for oh, free sweet. like it's like free prizes for coming in and stuff so it was cool but like we got <laughs> i think like two of them we didn't win a single match but one of them we got past the first round and then the second round we got smoked by this team but like dude we just like we did I, we felt like we were playing in slow-mo that's how good they were they were like diving around while jumping and everything <laughs> it was just like wow yeah it was crazy uh, but it was that's yeah, Gears of War was a huge part of my life for a long time. Uh, but anyways. Secret of Mana, Ed. Why is this game so special? This game is so special. Uh, it is a... Uh, well, to start it, start, start it off, uh, this is a three-player um, action RPG in the style of you think of Zelda. And... You get your main character that you get the name, but you also get a princess, and you also get a sprite, a little kind of midget uh, person. And anyone who has played this game knows about the multi tap. So once you uh, get the new character, which is sad that because get, there should be like a third little port right just on the side for three player <laughs> secret of mana. Yes. But that was like a cool thing at the time where it was like this action RPG you could play with your friends. And exactly. each player would kind of like level up their like own character. And it was it was like a big deal. Like I've I've never played it, but I've watched a lot of this game. Like because like Game Informer does that show called Replay, which is kind of where I kind of wanted to format this show after that where they play old games and talk about them a little bit. Yes. Uh, and they did a lot of they I can't remember if they did like their quote super replay on this where they play through the whole game, but they they've played this game multiple times on there, and yeah, it's it's always talked very highly of. So yeah, um, and I'm actually kind of glad they put this on instead of Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono Trigger. There's just too many versions of that game that's mm-hmm. out. Um, and with Secret of Mana, what made it so good was. Um, Super Nintendo was going to have a, a CD add-on, mm-hmm. and people who probably know the story, but uh, Sony and Nintendo had a partnership where they were going to be making the Super NES CD. Well, that didn't work out, so it ended up coming out to be the PlayStation. It was going to be the Super, Ni- uh, uh, Super Nintendo PlayStation or Super PlayStation, something like that. Mm-hmm. And 
what ended up happening was that you know I think Nintendo backed out and yeah like at the last minute at the or last something. minute yeah and like Sony was like devastated because they brought it to whatever convention like the, it, it was probably like it wasn't E3 it was probably like CES I'm assuming and like mm-hmm. they had brought in their prototype to show off at CES for Nintendo. Yes. And during the conference, Nintendo backed out of the deal with Sony and ended up striking a deal with Panasonic, and then none of that ever came out either. Right. And then, what, like maybe two years ago, an original version of this, like a working version of the Nintendo PlayStation was found, and, you know, they found a game cart to plug into it, and it worked. Yes. So that was that was really cool to see too, like people actually finding this thing and actually <laughs> seeing proof that it exists. Yes. So, uh, oh, got a chest already. Candy. Candy. Candy is the is like kind of the potions of the game. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, that's what happened with this. So, uh, Square Soft at the time, that's what their name. They put this game on a cartridge, and there was a lot of stuff that got cut from this game. So when it comes to the Sony PlayStation one, they're going to add everything that was which was originally missing in the game. Are you talking about the remake? The like, remake. Okay. Yes. So, that, you know what would have been cool is if like that collection that came out, they would have added it into that too, as sprite based stuff. Well, everybody was kind of confused on why uh, Switch didn't also get it. And I think it's because of uh, Switch getting that collection. Well, the, the thing too is like, since that was a, it was, they were gonna sell it as a PlayStation add-on for the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. I wonder if somewhere in there, like Sony, kind of not owns the rights to this game, but kind of like that content is Sony specific content for that game. And I wonder if that just never. Like that licensing stuff never changed hands or anything. For, for the the stuff that was cut that was supposed to be on the disc for the. Oh no no oh no, uh, that stuff was uh planned. Sony has nothing to do with the content because uh, that this belongs to Square Enix. Everything that was in the game belongs to Square Enix, uh, or SquareSoft at that time. And because SquareSoft didn't have enough space. Uh, because of the CD being cut, that material had to get taken out. So, uh, Square Square Soft can put that content in the remake if they want to. It has nothing to do with Sony with it. Now, if Sony would have uh, made the game, that's fine. And and plus, even if that did happen, Sony wouldn't have to have that right. Uh, Nintendo would because it's their platform. Right. Sony was just only making the system. So, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see how this that all comes out. So, right now, um, you gotta see more candy. I love um, that. I love that animation where he picks it up and just kind of shakes it. Yes, that's awesome. So, uh, another thing about this game, uh, wow, the sprite works just beautiful. In this game. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you see that uh, I just went to another level. That's normal RPG stuff. But if I attack and I hold uh, hold the B button, I can do the special attack right here. So that is kind of what your charges. Think of the Legend of Zelda when uh, the spin attack. The spin attack, yeah. Now, in order for me to get more powerful, I had to get orbs, and with these orbs uh, that I get for uh, a particular weapon, because you get to switch up your weapons, um, you. Uh, we're able to get new uh, that same weapon, but like uh, you know, it's a stronger weapon and it might do different powers. And every time you charge and you level up, it would do different attacks. So you would have to go up eight times. What happened though is that because they got the content uh, cut, you don't get all eight orbs for each weapon. Right. You, it had there's there was a bug that was in the game that prevented that from happening. So, so right now I'm just going to actually talk to him. Man, that 
can't get over the sprite work, man. I, every time I like, like, I'm like, yeah, okay, Super Nintendo 16-bit console, like, yes. The sprite work always looks good, but every time I see a new, another game running, I'm just like, man, the 16-bit stuff, it's just like, it's really awesome just to see it again, like, running correctly on a TV like this. Exactly. And, and it's like, I don't know, man. 16-bit is like, I get it, it's 16-bit, but at the same time, every time I see a Super Nintendo game running, I'm re... re-floored at, like, how good everything looks. Well, the thing about, uh, the 16-bit genre is that even though it was, uh, you could see the advancement from 8-bit with the pixels and stuff, the things that a lot of uh, programs were doing on the system was unimaginable. Stuff that shouldn't be done on these low power consoles, they all took a risk and was able to perform it. Like we talked earlier about that art style with uh, Power Block. <laughs> with, uh, with, um, that, that art style with uh, Yoshi's Island. Who would have known? Star Fox. Uh, even if we look at the Sega Genesis, Vector Man. Mm-hmm. Like, if you see some of the stuff that these programmers were able to do on these consoles, mm-hmm. I mean, even you if you like, even if you look at like Sonic Two, like in Sonic Three, like the say what you will about the gameplay, but like the graphics are still like some of the best. Yes. Uh, and it, it's cool because like you can see the layers of the background and the foreground, and then. You know, the enemies coming in. It's just, I just, every time, I'm floored. And everybody, don't forget Earthbound is on the game. So, mm-hmm. R.I.P. Iwata. We just had a discussion yeah. about those. So check that, check out that episode. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's good that they actually put Earthbound on here. Mm-hmm. Kind of to pay respects to him, in my opinion, I, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you want to check out another game? See what else is on this cool little... Sure. Contraption we just purchased. Right, so. I'm gonna hit the reset button. Oh, it feels so good. Uh, yes. Uh, I feel like being adventurous. Okay. Mega Man X. Yes. This game. I love Mega Man X. Oh, the soundtrack is phenomenal. Now, this is where they separated after Mega Man 6, uh, um, or actually Mega Man 7. Uh, because Mega Man 7 is a different style mm-hmm. of, of a Mega Man game. Because the the 16-bit, the graphics were, like, bigger and stuff. Mm-hmm. But Mega Man X is kind of in the future, so this is where they separated. This soundtrack is still amazing. And yeah. they kind of treated this almost as... Not as a Metroid game, but it kind of feels, in a way, as a role-playing game. Yeah. Where you get in the hearts and stuff. Yeah, plus it's kind of like... A lot of the levels are kind of like have that light exploratory element to it. Yes. Uh, a good example of like a modern Mega Man X style game is like the Azure Striker Gunvolt games. Yes. Uh, for 3DS and uh, I think they're available digitally on Switch and if not they're coming soon. I think they're available digitally and the physical copy is coming at the end of October for those. Um, but even that or even like Mighty Gunvolt Burst for Switch feels like a Mega Man X game. It's that game's really good, by the way. If you have a Switch, you need to download that game. It's uh, ten bucks. Like, uh, I, oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, uh, oh, this game. I let Corey uh, uh, <laughs> continue to. Uh, uh, I, I just remember the first time I played this game, I was like, man, this feels like, this feels like a mix between, like, this, this, like, I played Mega Man 7 and thought it was okay, but this feels like the natural progression for Mega Man. Yes! This game. Uh, Mega Man 7's good in its own specific way, but this, like, the slides, the dashes, the, uh, you know, the cool bosses and like this this just felt like a natural progression for Mega Man uh the wall like the wall jumping is really cool uh the fact that like yeah just see like all the stuff that Ed's doing right now just feels like such a natural progression for Mega Man 
but and this was the cool thing about this game. So, if you beat a certain boss, uh, sometimes it will affect a different world. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was literally cool. Yeah, it like didn't like it didn't really affect how you played, but it would have changed the different worlds. Yes, because of what how you how you played it, and it's just like it was really cool to see that stuff. And it's just oh, this game's really good. I just went and actually I wanted to play these games again before the SNES Classic, and I yeah. actually just downloaded. It's weird because on the 3DS, Mega Man X and Mega Man X3 are available. But Mega Man X2 is not available. So I downloaded Mega Man X and X3. I, I have all of them on my uh, Wii U. Yes, everybody. Yeah. Of course, I'm not giving them my Wii U. That, that, that system, I, I still used, think. I used to have that, the weird GameCube anniversary collection. Uh, yeah. Uh, I still have mine. Can't play it on there, though, because the buttons are backwards. And it makes it impossible to play. Like that and the Mega Man collection on there, the anniversary collections are just like that's like the the one time I recommend playing Mega Man on PlayStation <laughs> instead of instead of the GameCube, GameCube because like yeah the D pad feels good but like the buttons are backwards but they're in the right places on PlayStation so oh, but these I just remember I love Mega Man X. Like and I love I love original Mega Man too. And when nine yeah. when not when they announced nine and ten and they went back to that original style, which is why like I'm I'm really excited to play Mega Man Legacy Collection two. But what I'm really hoping is that they'll release like a forty dollar cart with all ten games on it for Switch next in the spring. Please do, please. I will pay forty dollars for like that. that's what I'm expecting because like both collections. I think the. Well, the first collection for 3DS was $14.99, but on consoles it was, what, $29.99? Yeah. Uh, and then the new one is $19.99 because it has less games, but I figure by the time both of them come out, it would probably be 40 bucks. Plus, it has all that cool art, and like it has a lot of cool things, like a museum-type thing on that collection. Uh, yes. So, I'll just give this some of the dialogues. Uh, Ed, who's this character? This is Zero. Uh, so we are introduced to him. If you guys have played Mega, uh, some of the Mega Man games for Game Boy events, they they have him on, like he has all these games. Uh, but I I uh, remember playing him on Mega Man uh, X Five. Right. And uh, I'm going to the Penguin stage. And uh, in X5, you got to switch between Mega Man and Zero. Uh, Zero, he's kind of like, he has a blade, um, and he struggles with some issues. Uh, I don't know why, because he's a robot, but okay, whatever. Um, but the Robots I, are people too, Ed. Well, yeah. The game was actually easier. Did you watch Terminator? <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that, I can't believe. They're just feeling like... Yeah, we're gonna kind of ignore three, four, and five, and we're just gonna make a sequel to Terminator Two. I'm just like, come on, really? It's like, uh, most of all your other movies were sequels, besides like the last one that came out. I'm just like, I don't. Terminator is an interesting franchise that should have just stopped after two, maybe. She should have stopped after one. I mean, two is great. Don't get me wrong. It's, I think it's the best out of the whole. Uh, Franchise. Uh, you know what I want? I just want to do an Indiana Jones movie. That's coming. I know it is. I'm really worried about it. <laughs> Shy the buff not in it. Nope. He's not. I wonder if they're gonna recast that character or if they're just gonna just kinda no, his character's not in it. So. I just I hope Sean Connery makes an appearance. I just want I just want a sequel to The Last Crusade. <laughs> <laughs> I want The Last Crusade too. But like old man Sean Connery and old man Harrison Ford just being like grumpy old men together just <laughs> running around the world trying to find stuff. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. But I mean, if they're going by Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, apparently Sean Connery's character is dead, so no problem. Have you seen Sean Connery lately? Uh-uh. He's, uh, he looks kind of bad. I'm a little worried. 
about him like being around much longer. Oh wow. So, uh, apparently I should have switched my dash to R. Oh yeah, that was the other thing about this game too, is like you can switch the buttons around. Yeah. To, to, and that was kind of, I mean, revolutionary at the time where you could choose how you wanted to play this game. So yeah, because A does it and also double tap, but when you need to be in the air, for me, Gosh. I remember getting in this. Sorry to interrupt you, but I remember getting in this mech the first time. I'm like, I'm a robot driving a robot. And he fell down. Oh no! <laughs> Hi, wife. Hi. Would you like to join our let's play? No. Are you sure? No. Ed's a robot driving a robot. <laughs> My wife is a Mega Man X expert. Oh, dang it. Ugh. It's okay, Ed. You got what? One life left? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're just playing to show you guys. Yeah, we're just it's we're off. trying to go through some of the cool games that maybe you should probably check out. I mean, obviously everybody's gonna play Zelda and, and Mario and everything, but like Yeah. I kinda wanna play that opening scene of Met Super Metroid, but we'll we'll do that later. Ugh. That is Still to the like, day, I don't, I don't want to get into playing Super Metroid. I just want to play that opening scene. Like, and don't get me wrong, I, I want to play Super Metroid too. But like, just for this, I want to just play that opening scene. Uh, yes. After this, we should play that first level of Star Fox. Yes. So. My wife just flicked the whole audience off. It's a meanie. Just kidding. Not kidding. Kidding. Hey, everybody, I'm at the boss. The yeah, game. boss fight! Where did the NES a minute ago? I put that played it back in. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. I was like, where'd it go? And, like, I just. I love the way 16 bit games feel. And I, I kind of feel like. I don't know, they just, they play so much better than than 8-bit games, like, don't get me wrong, I love Mario 2 and 3 and, and Zelda and everything, but like, everything just feels refined, and, like, they learned what they were supposed to be doing and they're doing it now. You know what I was thinking about too, the other day, it was like, you know how like we we love Shovel Knight and everything? Yes. What if they did like Shovel Knight X instead of like Super Shovel Knight? Uh um, they just took like a few things and like gave him like just a little bit more powers and just upgraded the graphics a little bit. Kinda like this. Like that. Mm, I can see it. Mm -hmm. I think they should. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time you can't really like do like the charge shot or anything because he just <laughs> wields a shovel. Uh, but that was that was Mega Man X. We're gonna play this Star Fox level so we can do a proper Let's Play of Star Fox Two. Yes. Uh, reset one more time. Just like this, it looks like almost like the 3DS. Yeah, I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. I like every time I turn my 3DS on, there's an update. There's always like a new demo on my dashboard. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Hey, this is available. Do you want to go to the eShop and buy it? I'm like, no, I'll just move this little package to this unused demos folder. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of like the biggest anomaly on the Super Nintendo, I would call it. Because it's the first, like, it's a 16 bit system using a special chip to create polygons on. <laughs> essentially a console that can't have polygons. Yes. Which is funny because this same company got polygons running on a Game Boy at some point. Wow. And like, so yeah, Star Fox, I mean, I really, I really don't know how to, like if you've played Star Fox 64, this is kind of like a slowed down kind of prototype of that. Of Star Fox 64, where like it's it's an on rails shooter. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see it in a minute, but basically, it's it's a, a 
very polygonal version of Star Fox 64 and mm -hmm. Star Fox Assault and Star Fox Zero. Like, it's that game. It's that game, but like, the, I mean, it's the first one and very graphically impressive for the time, but also not very impressive because it's straight up colored polygons. <laughs> I mean, you can see it right here. This is what the whole game looks like, pretty much. And it's funny, because I think this is the first game that started off the uh, discussion topic of introverted control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, like, inverted controls, I, I, play, I play normal controls when playing, like, a first-person shooter or something. Yeah. But when I get in a vehicle, it's got to be inverted. Because I'm flying a ship. Yes. And, like, it makes more sense. So pressing down makes you go up. Pressing up makes you go down. Yeah. So this is Star Fox. This is... It's so crazy. Oh my gosh, this game. Look at these polygons. Look at these... Look at these things. They try to add shading with just, like, pixels. Oh man, this game is cool, but also... This is rough. This is rough to watch. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it, like, it's super impressive that they got this running on a Super Nintendo at all. But also at the same time, it's actually not as framey as I remember it being. Yeah. I wonder if that's just like the emulation allows it to run better. But like, it's it doesn't look as framey. The weird thing is too is like trying to control a spaceship like on rails it's different with the d-pad but like Star Fox 2 a lot of people are like this game doesn't have a joystick and it's really hard to control this ship without a joystick because like you only have f four directions instead of like oh I can angle this way a little bit and then go up you know so but yeah, Star Fox is is pretty impressive for the Super Nintendo. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I remember playing this game like for almost four hours at my cousin's house, trying to beat it. Uh, and this was kind of one of my Dark Souls games, cause. Uh, because I mean, like Star Fox is, is hard. Like after this, like this first level, it's like Star Fox is, is like it looks simple, but it's actually like pretty challenging. Yes. Like especially playing with the D pad and like trying to figure out like where to go because you can see you can see the polygonal drop in <laughs> like halfway through this part, and all of a sudden there's a building on your left, and you're like, oh, I shouldn't go that way. Right. And uh, you can never tell uh, where or you were hitting anything because they didn't have that vertical box. Right. So and you didn't have no lock on. Or anything. Yeah, you just kind of had to guess where you were shooting. Like you had to, and like I don't really think Star Fox sixty four had. Oh yeah, I did have that vertical on. But like, look at this boss, man. Look at it. I still can't believe this ran on a Super Nintendo. Like, I really can't believe that this, this ran on a Super Nintendo. <laughs> I'm really interested to see Star Fox 2. Watch out for the bombs! Get him! Get him! Yes! 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 Ugh. Star Fox, what an interesting game. Oh man. So, Ed, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you want to end this Let's Pot and Play, or do you want to try one more game? Uh, let's try one more game. Okay. We're gonna put on a second. Uh, only reason because I want to make sure that they don't lock. Right, you're right. Because you have to beat the first level to unlock Star Fox 2. I wonder if there's going to be like just like this notification. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to reset.
one last time. You unlocked Star Fox 2. Good job, Ed. Yay. Oh, Alright, that is some cool box art, by the way, for that game. <laughs> Shit, we... <laughs> Let's some goose and go. You know, you know what we should do? We should battle it out in Mario Kart. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Curry <sighs> has joined the fray. Yes. Okay, so a lot of people swear that this is still the best Mario Kart. And I'm gonna go out and say that they're wrong. I think Mario Kart 8 is the best Mario Kart, followed by Double Dash yes. and DS are my favorite Mario Karts. I'd say Mario Kart DX, since that's the deluxe edition. I would say that one. That's complete fact. If you right. So, did we do Mario Kart GP, Match Race, or Battle? You know what, let's just do GP. 50cc? Whoops. I don't know. No! Who, who did you want? Fine, I'll be Toad. No, I'll take Toad. Nope, I'm Toad. I'm the best! <laughs> Let's go Flower Cup. Alright! Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna push you over every time you're winning. Oh. How do I go? A? B? A? B? B? Okay, and R's jump. Okay, good. Oh, jeez. See, this is why this game is not the best. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, super impressive for the time. So basically what they did was like make this really flat map and did the, uh, with the super effects chip, they uh, allow, they scale the map uh, and allow us to be 3D models on this, or polyg- Wow, let me start over. I'm sorry. It was a long night, no sleep, standing in line for this thing. Uh, picking up bed. I, they made a flat, pixelated map. And then they used the effects chip to rotate it to simulate the, um, movement of the map and make it feel like you're actually making progression, whereas, like, your character. Why does my character keep jumping? He's like obsessed with jumping. Uh, remember, you used to. Well, you can't really hold shells now. Unfair, my character is defective. <laughs> Why does my character keep jumping? Like, look at my character, he just keeps jumping by himself. He's literally jumping by himself. Because you're hearing the bumps that's in it. Oh, okay. I was like, why is my character jumping by himself? Uh, but anyways, it allowed the pixelated character to look like he's moving throughout the world when he's actually stationary in that center of your screen. Yeah. And they actually did this cool thing where if you play single player mode, it still looks like this, except for the bottom part where player two is. Uh, is actually like a rear view mirror. Oh, so that's cool. Alright, now I'm in my element. No bumps to jump on today! Going down, Ed. Going down. I'm just taking my character, but I'm taking home the trophy. Now, was the coins still your speed? Uh, I think, yeah, coins... I, well, I don't know. See, I don't know. I think so. Because why else would they be in this game? Why else would they be in here? Right. I've, I've never understood. Aha, uh -huh, Yoshi, you suck. Yeah, I think, like, the ten coins increases your max speed. So, I mean, I think, that, I think that's still like a general Mario Kart rule. Well, they took coins out for a while, actually, but... I would love to see them add, like, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like, I know how they do the retro tracks, but I would love to see, like, 
Super Nintendo pack where they add all the tracks from Super Nintendo or like an N64 track uh, map pack and like you know right. kind of like that or like make like a hundred dollar deluxe edition where you get all of them It just Ed's had more more practice. No, I haven't. I'm not that good at Mario Kart. I tell you that. <laughs> Double Dash, yes. Mario Kart, mm -mm. my friend used to whoop my tail in this game. How am I still in second place? Because you came in first. I did not come in first. Uh, last. Alright, here we go. Should have went with Yoshi. How <laughs> did you jump? I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> don't worry, I'm gonna play Mario Kart 8 later. Oh no, I got one of the moles on my face. Yeah, when we play, I'll be like, everybody look, I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah, when we, play, when we play on Switch, get off me, man. Why is he still on my face? Oh no, I did it again! That came on a lot of my face. I'm driving weird spaces. It feels so weird to hold a Super Nintendo controller again. Exactly. Well, no, not for me. Well, I mean, like, when you're, well, when you're playing well, Destiny for so long, or, oh, like, yeah. when you're playing Mario and Rabbids, or, like, can uh, I? later on. Or probably on an episode you guys have already seen, but like uh, playing FIFA with the pro controller was just like, dude, how good did FIFA look? By the way, oh, amazing, everyone, like, amazing, like literally, I, I, I couldn't tell. Like, I honestly couldn't tell that it was a different version. Like, I really need to pick that game up. I'm like, like I, soccer is one of those sports games where like I like to have one around for like three or four years before I buy a new one but like I'm really glad I picked it up on Switch yeah it looks really good the football is you weird European say he's speed which is funny because I heard my friend my one friend who lives in Scotland like he <laughs> he calls it soccer also and I don't know if that's because like a lot of his friends are American, but like mm -hmm. he's, he calls it soccer too. Oh my gosh, that wasn't the final lap. Dude, those money moles really screwed me up. Oh, I'm coming after you, Ed. At... Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I don't know, wait, Donkey Kong Jr. Awful character. The game no. is terrible. Get off me. Actually, don't. I think it's pretty fun. Yes, me, me and Adrian Yeto had a huge... This, we had an argument to the point where Adrian put it on Facebook and I was right. Did he come racing versus Mario Kart? And I was... And then Adrian got mad and Adrian just like, fine, have your Mario Kart. Did he come racing? It's still good. I was just like... Adrian, I'm not arguing with you. The discussion is saying that Mario Kart is discussed more over Diddy Kong. Yeah, which is weird because, like, like I don't get me wrong, I like Mario Kart 64, but Diddy Kong Racing had like this really cool single player adventure mode that was kind of different for racing games at the time, and which kind of like reminds me of what like the crew is trying to do right now. To be honest with you, uh, I wonder if Ubisoft will ever bring those games over. I would like to see Steep well, eventually come. Yeah, I, I think they will. I think Steep will. If Steep doesn't come by holiday this year, I think it'll be here next year. Yeah, I, I kind of peg it for like February. It's running on the, the Mario Rabbids engine, so like, you know that engine can run. Right, and it, Nintendo went there and to help them, so... Mm -hmm. I wonder like, I wonder if a game like 
a sequel to The Division will come too once Nintendo gets its online services done. Mm -hmm. Not not that like I know people are probably scoffing at me by saying that, but like it runs on the it runs on the Snowdrop engine. Beat you. Ha! No. Uh, it runs on the Snowdrop engine. The it has dedicated servers, which would kill the fact of lag and stuff. And like, you know, if Nintendo can get their online stuff situated, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I feel, and even if it's not like the Division Two, I feel like they could do something cool specifically for Nintendo. Like I said, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That <laughs> Metroid Prime Federation Force type game that I was that I really want. You know, like I, I lap four. What? All right, this one has what five laps? Yeah, they all do because the laps are so short. Uh, for kids. And it's kind of weird that because of the laps being short, uh, when you play the games that are on, that they're uh, two three laps because they're long. Mm -hmm. Dude, you know what we should do also? We need to we need to, uh, message Jesse to see if he'll play some Halo 3 with us. Does he have the Master Chief Collection? Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. If only I had a device right in front of me that can contact people whenever I needed to. I can do those things. It was called, uh... Smoke signals, wasn't it? First place! Suck it, Ed! Second place! Still number one! Sure. Let's eat chicken, Corey! <laughs> oh, man. I'm contacting him. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, that was another thing. I, want, I asked this question in the Facebook group. Uh, I thought maybe we could either bring it up on Arsenal X this week or next week. Like, what are some games that we want to finish? Uh, beside, but we got sidetracked from something else. Um, and Moose just said Mafia Three. I really wanted to get back to that. Game. Yeah, we actually. Yeah, when we was talking about that. There's another one. Yeah. What? I feel like. Yeah, I, I like. I really want to play Mafia Three because I hear the story is like really good. Yeah, I have it on uh, PlayStation Four. So, like, um, and, which sucks is like I, I was gonna get it, but I had to renew my Xbox Live because it expired, and I wanted to make sure that we, that I had Xbox Live for this weekend, that you were here because like, what if we were playing Destiny with uh, Jesse or? you know, trying to finish the campaign or, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, even doing some Halo because I do want to do a Halo 3 because it's ten, it's the 10 year anniversary of Halo 3. Uh, I do want to do a Let's Play of that at some point. So I was trying to, I made sure I had that. It sucks because it was on sale on Xbox for like $8 or something this week. Wow. This week, this past week. Is this the $8? I don't know. Which we'll check. Yeah, we'll, we'll check later. Um, don't worry, it's not eight dollars by the time you're watching this video. I can probably assure you that. I don't know. This video might be in time, up in time, but uh, yeah, that it was eight dollars, and the season pass was like five bucks. <sighs> Which sucks because I really wanted to play it. Cause, like that, the concept of that game was super interesting, and like I, I know a lot of people say the open world stuff is kind of worthless and not needed, but I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about open world games except and, for Zelda. And it is Friday, so I wonder if PSN also got it. Oh yeah, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if PSN has that flash set. So. Man, this is a good round of Mario Kart. Finally, I finally got my groove back. Oh, shoot. What pipes. Ah! Bowser, get out of my way! Haha, you hit that, that fireball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hit the, uh... Haha, -ha, you hit it again! Ah! <laughs> I passed you! Oh! Oh! Uh oh! Oh! Toad's in first place! Yes! No! No! Yes! No! Oh, no! 
No! Bye, wife. Are you going to play Mario Kart 8 with us later? No. You're not going to play Mario Kart with us? No. No. Why? You like Mario Kart. I don't want to be last when you Girl, you're probably going to get more spots than me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I love you. Bye, I'll be good. Where are you going? That's mom's in Spanish in case you guys need a lesson. Oh! Oh, you're still like really whooping my butt. Why is it every time I'm robbed of that first place <laughs> win, <laughs> it happens? <laughs> yeah, look at me, second place. I always thought this was cool. I always wanted to get to the end because, like, <laughs> the champagne bottles and it popped the fish balloon. Ah, oh, it's just the best. Koopa Troopa wins the gold. Yes! Oh, man. What a what a great little system. Dude, this is 80 bucks, two controllers, 20... This might be the best compilation of games ever released. Nice. Like, it's missing. It's missing like maybe four or five key Super Nintendo games, but as like a whole kind of compilation, like this is probably one of the best compilations ever released on the system. And it's eighty bucks, two controllers, uh, plug and play. It's it just sucks because Mortal Kombat Two should have been. I know. Like I was thinking, like. Some sort of Mortal Kombat should be on here, which it's fine because Street Fighter's on here, and that was more Super Nintendo, and Mortal Kombat was more Genesis because of the blood stuff. But like, but that was the first one. Part right. two fixed all of that. Uh, Chrono Trigger, maybe. Like, I'm, I'm talking in terms of games that are missing off this. That would have um, made it the perfect one. But Chrono Trigger, Donkey Kong Country two and three. I know. I mean, two specifically. I know a lot of people love Donkey Kong Country two. Uh, Mortal, Act Razor. Mortal Kombat, Act Razor, uh, Soul Blazer, uh, Gradius, uh, maybe a Super R type. Like, like the sh there's no shooters really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of people were talking about uh, Gradius. How that should have been on here because like that's when like I mean I know shoot 'em ups were kind of like dying out because the arcades are dying because you could bring your Super Nintendo home with you but like yeah that was a major title for the Super Nintendo like it was cool yes. like uh Turtles in Time I wouldn't exactly say Tournament Fighters was a stellar fighting game but I would have put it on here because it's Ninja Turtles yeah uh what was the other one I was gonna say uh Killer Instinct should have been on here uh, yeah, but I still feel like Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct was better on N64. Uh, but, gosh, every time I go to say the game, we start talking about something else and then I forget what I was going to say. Uh, King Griffith Jr. Baseball should have been down here as well. Ooh. Yes. So, yes. those are like the Super Nintendo games. I feel like are missing... Uh, there's probably like a list of 10 or 12 that are missing on here that are like genuinely great games. Uh, but, you know, overall, great little collection. Ed's playing Street Fighter 2 right now, by the way. Uh, also available on Switch uh, and every other platform I've ever made. Uh, but, it's better than 5. Yeah. Well, they say 5 has gotten got better. They say the mechanics of 5 are good. But the stuff in the thing was not so. Um, but yeah, this is our look at the Super Nintendo Classic. Hopefully, you enjoyed some of the games. I know we didn't get to like Mario World or Link to the Past or Super Metroid, but those are games we just assume people are going to start playing as soon as they get it. We yes. want to take a look at some of the games that we feel like, even though they're great games on this box, they're going to be underutilized because people will be playing those games first. So, uh, yeah, so. Remember, we're going to check out Star Fox 2 specifically in its own Let's Pod and Play. Probably going to be a shorter one than this. I know we kind of jumped around, but uh, yeah, this is this is Super Nintendo Classic. Remember, you can watch our unboxing. Remember to download our Nintendo podcast, Nintendo Power Block. Uh, it's not our only show. We have a whole family of episodes, uh, or a whole family of podcasts, I should say. NGR Radio, Arsenal X, Nerds Gone Platinum, World War One, Brew Review... Uh, Matt and the B flats. I think they're gonna do like one episode every other week. I think is what I heard. 
um, okay. until Matt comes back from his hiatus of moving and everything. So, uh, anyways, Nintendo Power Block every Tuesday and Friday. Download at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. It's usually just at 9, but sometimes we have guests. And uh, until next time, we love you. Make sure you subscribe so you know when the Star Fox 2 uh, Let's Play is going up. So. Yeah, so everybody, let's find a play. Woo! Yes!